Welcome back to Today in Atlanta Sports. It is almost the end of March, and I think once March ends, I'll be tired of talking about the subject of Deshaun Watson. But this is one of my favorite topics. We're going to expand it a little bit on Arthur Blank, who finally commented on the situation between Watson and the Falcons. And let's be honest, uh, what Terry Fontenot said and Arthur Smith kind of downplaying the whole situation, uh, Arthur Blank doubled down on that. He said he was the leader of it, but he said they only talked to an hour or talked to Watson for about an hour and 15 minutes. Um, What's even more discouraging was kind of the way he described the investigation process of, you know, the whole sexual misconduct. He basically said, oh, we have a, I had previous experience with him four years ago when he was in high school, he was a ball boy. And basically justified that as I didn't really need to have an investigation. Another just sign of incompetence in Arthur Blank. So that's what this episode is going to be about. Can the Falcons ever be successful again with Arthur Blank as their owner? Not that he's ever, we can ever force him out. I mean, he owns the damn team. You know, you know, Dan Snyder, you can't just get him out of there no matter how bad he is. But can the Falcons ever be successful again with Arthur Blank as their owner? It's difficult to say. I mean, you can't question his, you know, his motivation he wants to win a ring and obviously he'll do anything uh to get it and i think he's not alone in terms of the owners well, who will, would have taken sean anything? watson will he do anything because the one thing probably he needs to do is take a step back and stop acting like he's the general manager stop getting so involved in everything i think that's what i've been asking him to do for four years and ever since the Super Bowl, it's almost like he got more. I never really thought of Arthur Blank as a super involved owner early in his tenure. I think he always kind of stood back. Yeah, he was on the sideline. Yeah, he loved the players. But it seems like ever since that Super Bowl, you know, kind of evaded him the way that it did. Uh, he's become psycho obsessed with the team and wants to have hands on experience. So will he do anything? Because the thing that he needs to do most is just step the fuck back, own the team and let the guys that you put in the positions to do their jobs, do their job. Yeah, I mean, he all but confirmed um, yesterday and his uh, media availability that, you know, the Falcons were always tied to Matt Ryan's contract. I mean, the the trajectory of the team was always going to go where Matt went. Uh, and when the roster is as depleted as this one was, uh, obviously things weren't going to turn out well. And he was just clinging to relevancy. He just didn't want to give in to the fact that the most obvious answer was to rebuild. And he said uh, in a couple of statements, I'll read them word for word. Um, you can think of it uh, as a credit card. At some point, you have to pay the bank. At some point, there's a day of reckoning. All the extensions of Ryan's contract we did were a team decision. It was driven by the coach and general man, general manager. I was obviously aware of it, but I don't get involved in those levels of details as far as restructuring, whatever bullshit you hired these guys, they know what you expect. So they were pressing and pressing and pressing. And now here we are on the steps of a rebuild. Uh, I mean, it was inevitable and the guy just is, it feels like there's zero self-reflection, which seems impossible for a guy of his stature. I mean, the success he's had in business, you know, he's not an idiot. He's a smart guy. So all this stuff is kind of unbelievable. I mean, it, he, he, he's, he's losing so much of the fan base every single day with these kind of decisions he's saying. He also didn't say – he said on two different occasions that he was uh, spearheading um, the pursuit for Deshaun Watson and then in another interview said that he wasn't. So he's not even getting his lies straight. I mean, he, it's a terrible, yeah. terrible cover-up. If you ever think, if you think about the two probably biggest mistakes of this regime, I would say are not rebuilding in year one, which I would put more on Arthur Blank than anybody, and then I would say the Deshaun Watson saga in general and the way they've handled it since. Those are probably the two biggest, you know, warts on this regime. Otherwise, you can give them all the excuses they want. I mean, we know Thomas Dimitrov left this. Um, team in a, in a terrible spot we always knew it was going to get them to tear it down but if you look at the two biggest warts they're pretty much on arthur blank and at what point do you just stop getting involved like he kept saying you know during the hiring process and i never believed him but it was always like oh i'm gonna let these guys do their job i'm gonna let them do this it hasn't happened yet and i think maybe the matt ryan trade was the first time he finally sat back and said okay we're gonna have to rebuild this let's let them do the job but if this team's ever going to be successful, and I don't know how many years Arthur Blank has on his life. I mean, there's there's no doubt he's been a great man. He's been a great member of society. He's helped out the city a lot. 
But as far as the Falcons, ever since that Super Bowl, he's been nothing but a hamstring on the organization. And I just don't know when he takes a look in the mirror. I mean, you talk about self-reflection and says, hey, man, I got to stop doing this shit because it's the only thing he has to do. I do still believe in Arthur Smith. I do still believe in Terry Fano. Do I think they've done anything good yet? No, but I do think they're capable at their jobs. Let them do their jobs. And this team can dig this, dig themselves out of their hole. But if he keeps getting involved, if he keeps being a poor man's Jerry Jones, I mean, this team is going absolutely nowhere. And and I don't. When does it end? When does this? I mean, why? Who, what? What the hell is Rich McKay doing? Like, what? What is even his job? Like, what? What are these guys doing? There's no. What is anyone doing in this organization? It, it's very confusing to me because it's like, is Arthur Blank leading all of this? Because that's kind of what he said about Deshaun Watson, but he can't get his lies straight. Uh, I just, I don't get it. I, I don't understand. So I have to point the figure, finger somewhere. And he just seems like the one constant throughout all of this. Yeah. I, I was suspicious of it all. He, he's making it out to seem like he didn't know what the team did investigation wise, the specifics of the investigation, which makes me think that Rich McKay was the one spearheading it all and just kept blank in the dark so that he had plausible deniability. He could say, go up to the media, knowing Rich McKay wasn't going to have to go answer these questions. It was going to be Arthur Smith, Arthur Blank and Terry Fontenot. And now Arthur Blank has plausible deniability saying, you know, we weren't that interested. We did preliminary investigation we we did enough to interview this guy and it, it seems like you know out, outside of the 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 moral standing of all this um Deshaun Watson's off the field issues it, it's like blank is so out of touch with the fan base on this I, I he doesn't it. he doesn't even know what they want I don't yes I I completely agree it's like he doesn't even know what he wants because Throughout his tenure as owner, he's been a very, you know, morally correct guy. Like, he's been very standoffish. I mean, the Falcons have never been a team to go out there and get the Antonio Browns, the guys with character issues. It doesn't matter who's been the coach. They've always avoided those guys. And there's been times where I've wanted to get them. There's times it would have panned out and maybe things would have worked out differently. But they've always avoided those guys. Then you get to Sean Watson who comes up there, probably has the, the longest list of like, do not go after this guy. And he spearheads it. And when you hear the way he spearheaded and the way that he talked about it and the way he just kind of shrugged off everything he's done, it's just another example where if you can get close to this guy, if you can have a relationship with this guy, you pretty much got his, his love no matter what you do. And no matter if you're good at football, I mean, you look at Julio Jones, you look at Matt Ryan, you look at Deshaun Watson. These guys are all super close to this guy. I mean, even you go further, you look at Deion Jones. And then he talks in that athletic article about how he really missed out on, on the Falcons signing Foy Foy and miss, like wishes they could have signed um, Devondre what's Campbell. His name? Devondre Campbell. And it's like, dude, this personal relationships you get with these guys, it's completely ruined the organization. It's one of the biggest reasons the Falcons are in this mess. And then the Deshaun Watson is another example. He gets a little too close to a guy. It's like he's blindfolded. It's unbelievable for a guy who's so good in business and has had such a successful track record in other areas. It's like he's completely blindfolded by anybody that he's come friends with. Is he trying to be the next Rob Kraft? Like, does he want to be courtside at a Hawks game and hang out with Trey Young and Migos? Like, I, I don't understand what this guy's trying to do. Yeah, it, 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 this is who Blank is. I mean – during all the way back during the Vic era, uh, I mean, Vic lied to him and said, you know, he had nothing to do with the dog fighting or he wasn't involved, whatever. I don't know the actual details. Uh, and Blake believed him. Blake gave him the benefit of the doubt and it burned him. He did it again with Dan Quinn, thinking that little run at the end of the year, uh, that six game win streak, I think it was. Uh, you know, that was, you know, that was the spark the Falcons needed. He's ha he hangs on to guys that he develops a personal relationship with too long. And maybe that's good in the business world. I doubt it. I mean, you got to be cutthroat out there. No, uh, and and the, the, the NFL is the same thing. It's the same thing. It's cutthroat. You don't need to, you know, it's a business at the end of the day. You know, you can claim the Falcons are a family, you know, yada, yada, yada. But, you know, at the end of the day, you, you got one goal, and it's to win a Super Bowl. Everything that you do that isn't going in the direction of winning a Super Bowl is a mistake for every franchise. So, you know, clinging to that relevancy uh, and not getting rid of Matt Ryan when they should have last year and maybe taking, you know, a Justin Fields or a Mac Jones uh, in last year's draft when they had the chance. Now, you know, we've 
we've we've put off this inevitable rebuild and we're just one step behind where we should be. It, it, it's a shame. And and what's even crazier is I think it's going to happen with Grady Jarrett too. I mean, it, we're going to give him a massive extension, it feels like, and he's going to be making $24 million when he's 33 years old and he's offering close to nothing anymore. It, it seems like that's the road we're headed to. It, yeah, it's I mean, a it cyclical thing. It's cyclical, and it's, you know, I agree with you. you got to point the finger at somebody, and it's not the two guys who have been here for less than 18 months. It's the guy who's been here for over a decade. It's that guy. So, yeah, yeah I agree I with think, you. It's blank. I think, yeah, these these personal relationships, and I do think it's easy for owners to develop those relationships because they're not the guys making a lot of these hard decisions. Um, but when they get involved of them, you know, feelings get involved. The, the guys that aren't going to have feelings involved are Arthur Smith and Terry Fontenot. They both seems like they understand it. They understand this is a business. Um, and if, and if listen, listen, I mean, we can end it on this note because we almost keep saying the same things. But if Arthur Blank doesn't take a step back, if he doesn't let Terry Fonda and Arthur Smith do their jobs. And I mean, really take a step back. I'm not talking about, oh, like, like I mean, literally stop meddling. Like, watch the games, you know, take care of business things. You have no football knowledge. You're not good at this. Stop it. Stop getting involved. Stop meddling. You're not Jerry Jones. You're not Jerry Jones. And listen, the Cowboys don't even want Jerry Jones. I mean, yeah, Jerry Jones had that. They, they, he had those three championships back in what? Before we were born? Over the last 27 years, the Cowboys have been falling short, probably because of Jerry Jones. So it, these owners that try to get involved, I, I don't, there's not an instance in sports where it really pans out. It never does because they have no knowledge of the game. They have no knowledge of the business of the game. They don't know how to be cutthroat. They're owners for a reason. They, they, they made it in totally different aspects of life. And if, if he doesn't take a step back, there's absolutely no way the Falcons will ever, ever be successful again in his lifetime. I, I truly believe that. Yeah, I, I have to agree with you. Uh, I, I don't see this rebuild going. You know, it, 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 that's the crazy thing is he could luck into another quarterback and then, you know, the, the Falcons will be relevant again for the next so long, yeah. but they'll never win that Super Bowl because of him. Yeah, I mean, you, you take out Matt Ryan out of his career as an owner, and this is a joke of a franchise. Uh, Matt Ryan saved it. And Matt Ryan's been given a bad hand every every year is here. And there's a reason why he's not an automatic Hall of Famer. And it's probably because of Arthur Blank. I mean, if you really want to go there, too. So it's disappointing, but I stand by what I say. This team is not going to be good. They're never going to be successful again unless, you know, he takes just completely stops meddling, gets out of business decisions, stops even being involved with them. Let these men that you hire do the job. They're good at it and trust them. That's the only way this team's going to get back to, you know, the Super